All right, so let's close these with something practical and useful. Now, um, the point of doing this series is really to teach you C++. If you are learning C++, very often you are not really taught anything about the build environment. You have to struggle through it. A lot of people um, somehow get by and get to the point where they can do some stuff. They start learning the language, then inevitably they hit yet another barrier. So for those of you in that situation, hopefully this has been useful. The other audience though is that of people that do not care or have the time or do not want to learn C++ yet, but would actually like to build some of the amazing open source stuff that is out there and use it. And very often you there's a high threshold of risk to something like that. You pick up uh, something that is open source, uh, maybe they distribute the libraries, uh, they distribute it compiled, sorry, uh, it is a library if you're uh, if you're talking about a Maya plugin, then that person stops maintaining that project. All it will need really is a rebuild. Um, and uh, so you can do it. And that threshold of risk is really not worth it. Now, if you know how to build things for yourself, that threshold of risk goes down a lot. So this is a worth endeavor. This is something worth learning. So without further ado, um, what I'm going to use, but there's a bunch of nodes out there that you can uh, that you can look at. I'm going to use Sergey's uh, Maya Math Notes. I've mentioned them on the stream. There's something that I wish I could use on the stream, but uh, I promise that I would only use Vanilla Maya. So if you go on GitHub or if you Google Sergey K GitHub Maya Math Nodes, uh, you should get Sergey K, which is his GitHub repos, uh, Maya Math Nodes. Get in there, um, it will be a bunch of text files. You're maybe unfamiliar with programming, you don't know how to use GitHub, don't panic. There's cloner download. You want to download the zip uh, and you will basically get everything structured the same way it is here. So what we are gonna do with that? Now, in my case, uh, I have downloaded it into this directory and he provides a CMake for that. Uh, and CMake for um, for Visual Studio is quite decent these days, but we say that we want to do things from scratch. So let's see how hard this is. I've had a super quick dry run. I haven't even actually got the thing to compile and load. So I'm kind of doing this live. Uh, what do we want to do? Well, first we are gonna get us a new project slash solution. Empty project is gonna be fine. Uh, we are gonna call these uh, Sergey K MMN. Uh, you can put this wherever. It's gonna call the solution the same thing. Create director for solution. Uh, sure, yeah. Create a director for the solution. It'll take a second. Now, I also prepared the text file more for um, listing and reminding. There is hardly anything that you need to remember or know, other than you will need the Maya headers. You will need the Maya libraries and you will need to export initialize and uninitialize. And maybe if you really want the preprocessor devs, this is pretty much all that ever makes much of a difference. So let's start configuring this. Now, you might notice that there's no C, C++ here. Normally there was when we looked at this before. Don't panic. That is absolutely normal. There's nothing in the services or in the headers and you can have C++ files that are not really based around building from CPP leaves. So uh, that compiler option doesn't appear yet. Uh, don't panic if it's missing, you haven't done anything wrong. Uh, it's just the way it is. So the first thing we want to do is add the headers. Now VCC directory, VC++ directories, um, executable directories include, there you go, include. You want to append the path, you can use variables or whatever it is. Uh, and append the path where you can find the Maya headers, might be 2017 or whatever else. Remember to be in all configurations here so that you don't have to struggle uh, doing it for multiple configurations. At this point in your budding developer career, you're unlikely to want to create too many differences between them. Now, the linker is remember what takes care of the libraries. Uh, I don't know where everything is all the time. I usually just go, I know what I want and I know what it's called. So I usually just go in all options and um, look for what I know to be the name. So additional library directories. 
there you go uh, program files with the desk same as the include but it is gonna be lib so that as we add new libraries we will know what to uh, we'll know where they can be found now additional library should be in Visual Studio there you go additional dependency sorry um, we've talked about this hopefully this is still gonna be clear there's a bunch of stuff <coughs> sorry there's a bunch of stuff that by default Windows will bring in for you inherited values because of the default project uh, you probably don't need them you can keep them in there uh, there's hardly anything other than kernel 32 maybe that's gonna be uh, symbolized so and user 32 so they're not gonna fatten up uh, much and your lookup should still be reasonably quick if none of what I just said makes sense don't worry you can just ignore it now going back to what we have talked about before in your Autodesk Maya installation lib you will find several um, you hardly ever need most of these if you have no viewport stuff you don't even need OpenGL uh, everything you need is usually gonna be in here if you want to err on the side of caution foundation plus all of the open Maya stuff will usually get you by uh, about 90% of the time where you're using simple nodes such as in this case I reckon foundation open Maya possibly open Maya UI should be enough so we're gonna start with those uh, I'm doing this live uh, I want to keep the errors if I get any uh, because I think it's kind of the point it's supposed to be instructional so that should be it we're gonna okay that uh, apply that so that we save it uh, it's not impossible that you get a crash when you mess with the solutions especially when they're empty ironical enough uh, so watch it now this this active win32 win32 active is win32 sorry win32 and x64 you don't care for that distinction so you can go in configuration manager uh, edit x86 is 32 bit x64 is 64 bit just remove that x86 you don't really care there's not even a 32 bit Maya any longer I believe again save yourself some time and pain now we've talked about RTTI and the such let's not go there yet let's see if we can get this running without that now we do have uh, this is what I've downloaded if it's tiny uh, text wise I'm sorry for that but don't worry it's literally what I've downloaded from uh, github the CMake might give us some intuition about what might be needed. So if you find that you have errors, you know, we'll go back to that and maybe read it. But to begin with, you can go in source. Now, sometimes you will find an include uh, and that has the headers in it or headers or HD or H and that has the headers in it. Sometimes you will find everything bunched up together. Uh, if it's bunched up together, all the paths become so relative to the project that it's easier for you if not remember that you might have to look at what those headers import from each other how they relate to each other or how the plugin imports them now luckily sergey has been going really easy with this so we don't need to do much other than copy them where we care so this is the solution i made sergey k m m n i want to go in there i can dump all the files in there uh, actually you know what I'm gonna cut them and to clean things up a little bit to show you how the paths and stuff like that they're really not all that relevant the relative paths might be uh, how these relates to the others and how they relate to each other and so on but remember your project just gets you the starting point now that we have everything in place if we add plugin CPP in there when this looks for something absolute add array clamp all of these these are the ones that are provided by sergey in his plugin uh, they will be looked for first in the relative path so if they're where you have that plugin you're good to go that's it uh, if you were to move them all to a subdirectory called headers you could edit that and call it headers and be done with it now now that we do have something so you could also add those headers in there if you wanted individually but everything relative path in here I think we're in good shape now we should get a VC uh, sorry a CC++ yep because it knows what we're trying to do or it can guess to some extent and very good so what do we want in there actually um, 
C, C++, general, these are all the compiler um, flags that we might want. I'm trying to think if there's anything I left out. It doesn't look like it. So general configuration properties. This is the next step where we actually get to form what we want. And we want to switch configuration type to DLL. Uh, we want to do due diligence and say, look, the extension is going to be MLL because Maya and reasons. And I don't think we need anything else right now. Now, remember to do this with all configurations on. You don't want those differences. Uh, and I'm going to explain in a moment what the bug and release are. So that should be fairly self-explanatory now. Let's try and build that. Let's see what errors we get. Error release. So these are warnings. Uh, conversion from constant sign in to double possible loss of data. Uh, these you normally can ignore. It means there's an implicit conversion somewhere here. We can have a look, but yeah. Um, you don't really care. Those are just warnings. They're non-lethal. Now, unknown pragma. So we say that pragmas are directives that you can embed in code, but actually instruct the compiler, uh, the preprocessor, the compiler, like the following phases of the preprocessor. The compiler is something else on what to do. Uh, Clang diagnostic push, it's gonna, it's just gonna get ignored in this case. Uh, they're Clang, uh, they're Clang pragmas. They're not supported by Visual C, we don't care. Uh, this is a little bit more interesting, no name prefix. So when something is capitalized like this, most of the time people mean it to be a constant of sorts or it might be coming from a macro expansion. Uh, it depends. Uh, Maya will use K something for constants, which I find to be generally a good idea in C++ because all capitals normally is reserved for a macro. So we are interested in knowing if this is actually in use. So let's do another thing. So these headers are going to be picked up. I don't need to do these for the sake of compiling, but by dragging them in the header files here, they're now part of the project. So things that I do project scope, such as searches, uh, will respond to that. So if I find, if I do find and go uh, node name prefix, and I look for an entire solution, that is not done anywhere. So I do have a cheat in place here because I was talking to Sergey and I asked him if this was supposed to come from anywhere. Um, and I think he mentioned that somebody wanted to be able to change uh, because of the base names of the nodes. Somebody asked to be able to change them all in one go. So you could define this as a string, uh, something that will convert to a string for the project. So you, your build can actually change it. In this case, uh, let's say that we call all of our stuff SK uh, in Sergey's honor. That should just be a prefix, then it'll add the t-type name. The second error we were getting, and this might be less palatable to you, it's that c-string. Um, fix them one at a time, because following errors might go away. So c-string is a way to get more complicated strings to be converted to const char arrays, which is a c thing. Uh, you don't need to worry about this. This should disappear once this is replaced. And, and I didn't go this far when I did my dry run, but my guess is that unless this triggers some other error, we are good from here. Or possibly not yet. Wait, what? I thought I saved that. Plugin CPP. Hmm. I seem to have it in two places. Not something I noticed, but let's build that. So now all we get is warnings and we get one succeeded. Notice that I'm still in debug. It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, so we should have had an MLL. Now I've also shown you how to change build directories and such. I have it in this case which means that it's done the despicable Visual Studio thing where it will have put my stuff all over the place. So if I go to this, it will have built x64 debug. So the platform choice uh, together with the modality of it, like one of the, op the configurations you can pick. 
And the reason I'm allowing there, so I already have my open. It's a fresh instance. Shift control eight for me. Load plugin. Uh, I should be reasonably close. So sorry, the text is tiny, but it's what I have literally just shown you. Sergey K, MMN, MMN, MLL. All right, there you go. So it's um, this is some substitution and template magic. Um, I actually quite like it. Uh, he was saying that he's been thinking of removing it. It's not a bad idea. So that's a ton of nodes and. And I like a lot of the names I see. And we can do SK. Victory. All of our nodes actually work. Now, this is 2018. Uh, very good. So you, you are now, if you're in 2018, that's it. This is all you had to do. Uh, if anything changes, you know, if Sergey doesn't maintain this stuff anymore, you can still build your own. Now, if you are on and we didn't even need the preprocessor directives um if you are on 2017 remember that you need to uh output the initialize and uninitialize uh, functions for the dll to be able to hook up to maya so in that case it's linker again i'm gonna take the easy way out all options i know it's the common line Mm -mm -mm. Oh, never mind. Common line doesn't appear in there. Fair enough. It's an entire own thing. So uh, those are the same that we've mentioned before. What am I doing here? There you go. Remember these export initialize plugin, export and initialize plugin, uh, especially if you use something that is highly composed that maybe does macro trickery and stuff like that. It might be harder for you to put um, deco specs or the equivalent for some other platform inside in that case this is a good place to put those values in my case I'm doing it for the sake of expediency now these if you're in 2017 should have been the missing step and you should now be able to use these nodes then go around shop for more find things that you like and that's it you are done so one last note debug and release what is the difference now the long story short is that if you're compiling plugins for yourself you always want to be in release uh, optimizations get turned on uh, the things that get compiled are going to be considerably faster like a lot orders of magnitude uh, orders of magnitude in some cases uh, things like recursion that can put you into stack overflow states um, because of tail call optimizations will go away like if somebody, if you're downloading somebody else's source code and that somebody's competent, so you don't have to worry about fixing stuff. You just want to use their things. You want to use what they have made available, um, being released, and that's it. The point of debug is that there's a lot of stuff that gets added. Um, and this is a difference in the configuration. There's a lot of stuff that gets added uh, to the intermediate files. There is additional files exported that allow you to hook a debugger to pretty much anything, whereas release gets optimized. So a lot of hooking points might completely be optimized away by the compilation process. That is it. So if you're learning C++ and you want to actually attach a debugger and so forth, uh, go for a debug, play with things. Once you're happy with everything, once you've analyzed whatever you want, or you want to test performance, you switch to release. If you are just looking to build stuff, put it in release, build again. It's extremely unlikely that something will build in one mode and not the other. Ignore those warnings. Generating code, one succeeded. If you haven't changed the building intermediates, um, then you will have to go up. X64 should be the only platform you have, release. Get them MLL, copy wherever you want, and that's it. That's your plugin loaded. Uh, sorry, well, that's your plugin compiled. Put it wherever you want to load it from. And with that, that's it. Thank you very much for following these through all of these hours and all of that. I hope you found it useful, and I will see you on stream or on the next videos.